Good day all, this is uh, Brian again. Today we're going to be covering how to get a free VPS server from Amazon Web Services. Uh, if you don't know what a VPS is, you're probably not going to be interested in the video anyway, but just to cover it, a VPS is a virtual private server. It can also be referred to as a remote desktop or RDP, remote desktop protocol. Uh, what are some of the uses for it? Uh, for me, when I used to work in an office, it would allow me to kind of cheat and have my MT4 set up and I could just log on to it through a remote, remote desktop and access my MT4 and be able to trade from work. I know, not the best thing, but it's probably why I no longer take a full-time job and trade for a living. Uh, the other re thing you can do with it is it is good if you are using a signal provider. Um, you can install their software on it and just have it running. It's a good way to try out a signal provider before you jump into investing in a VPS um, to see if you like it, if you want to use it or not. Uh, these, this is not a super robust VPS. It's more of a minimalized one. They call it a micro VPS. Um, so again, it's a good way to jump in and try it out. Uh, some people that have, have followed my tutorial, I did one earlier for this, but it just was difficult to follow, so I'm going to do a more complete walkthrough. But they've used it with a couple signal provider services, and they've gotten actually pretty good results. So far, I haven't heard anything bad about it. But again, d try it at your own risk, because the performance is not guaranteed on it. But it is a really good way, without investing money, to get one, try it out, and get the hang of using a VPS, play around with it, and learn how to use it. Okay, so the first step you'd want to do is you'd head over to aws.amazon.com. When you do that, you're going to get this page. If you look right here, get started for free. We would click there. I'm logged in, so it might take me to a different page, but if not... Okay, so what's going to happen is... Here, let me uh, back up one. Well, I'm already signed in. But when you do click Get Started for Free, it's either going to ask you to log in, or it's going to say New User, and you're going to do that. You're going to go through a quick, maybe four or five minute sign-up process. One of the things it does ask for is billing information. What I do with these types of things, since I'm not going to end up using them, I have a prepaid credit card I use to sign up for these types of things, so that way if I do forget about it, whoop de do I drain the prepaid credit card later on, and I never get billed if it's something that, not this, but if it's something that reoccurs in the long run. Um, so what you'll do is you'll sign up, it'll ask for a little bit of billing information. You never get charged. This is just basically to weed out the people that will sign up for one for a year and at the end of the year sign up for another one and continue on and on. Or some people even sign up for multiple accounts, so it's a way for them to weed it out. Once you are done with the sign up process, what you will get immediately after that and if you can see, create account, payment method, identity verification. Now I'm on support plan, so we want to look for basic free. Make sure that's selected. Hit continue. Now it says thank you for updating, blah, blah, blah. So what we want to click is launch the AWS management console. Okay. This has changed a little bit since I've actually done it the last time because I do have one of these that I use. So if I'm in a friend's house, I want to show them how to trade. It just basically, it gives you access to your MT4 anywhere you're at that has internet. Every computer from Windows XP up has remote desktop, and we'll talk about how to get to that. But basically, here's what we want to do. We're going to click down here. It says Amazon EC2. We're going to click that. Ugh, actually, I'm sorry. We're going to go up to My Account Console, AWS Management Console. Now it's going to ask me to sign in. Now, from here, we would do EC2, virtual servers in the cloud. Sorry, like I said, this has changed a little bit since the last time I did it. Okay, so, as we can see, nothing's running. This is a brand new account. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get an instance going. So, if I remember right, launch instance. Okay, now from launch instance, it's going to give us a choice of a bunch of different instances that are all there. The first thing you want to do, click the free tier only, because you don't want to pick anything that's going to charge you. Now if we go down, they have Microsoft Windows Server 2008 base, R2 base, R2 with server, 
Windows Server 2012. You can go with 2012 if you want, or you can go with Windows Server 2008 R2 base. Two, I'm going to go with 2008 R2 just because it's proven. Um, this is what I've been running. I have played around with the server 2012, but in this one, up for you what you want to pick. If you want to go with brand new Fancy Fangled, go with 2012. But since we're using um, a server that basically 2008 uses less memory than 2012, so we're, I'm going to pick 2008. We go over here, we pick Select. For here, you can ignore all this. We're going to go to Review and Launch. And again, you can ignore it all. Just click Launch. Okay, so choose an existing key pair, none found. So we want to go to Create a New Pair and Key Pair Name. So we are going to go with 3MT4. Uh, VPS. Now the next thing you want to click is download key pair. It's going to ask you where you want to save it, so let's put it to, let's put it on my desktop for now. So free MT4 VPS, save. It's saved on my desktop now. So the next thing we want to do, launch instances. It's going to go ahead and create your VPS now. I'm not too sure how long this one will take. It's been a good six months since the last time I did this, so again, screens have changed a little bit. If it takes too long, I'll just pause the video. I really love this, though, because I can have my MT4 set up anywhere, so like I said, if I'm watching a game at a friend's house, I can just jump on a computer there. I'm, I'm not that addicted, but... And retry failed tasks. Let's go try it one more time. There we go. So your instance is now launching. It says the following instance launch has been initiated. View launch log. Okay, so what do we want to do? Go to view instances. Instance states pending. It says initializing. So let's give it a second. Or more. Now, sometimes it will hang on this screen, so what you can do is just go to EC2 Dashboard, and then jump right back to Instances, and there we go, we're running. Okay, right, next step, right-click your instance. And then from there, let me find it. I'm sorry, just click it and click Connect. So I put a blue dot in there, up at the top, click Connect. Now what it's going to do is just connect your instance. So the next thing we're going to do is click Download Remote Desktop File. This is just a shortcut icon to connect. So let's click it, Desktop. Right now it's 54.201.35.215. For now we're going to leave that number in there and click Save. Next step we got to do, we got to do get password because you still don't have a password for this thing yet. So let's click get password. And it says it's not ready yet. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video. And as soon as it's ready, we'll come back to that. Alrighty, we're back. Let me check sure this is running. Yes, it is. Okay, so once the 15 minutes took me about uh, nine minutes for the password to get generated. You're going to get connect your instance, get password, so key name, free, blah, blah, blah. Remember, we just downloaded that. In order to achieve your password, you'll need to specify the path of this pair on your local machine. I saved it to my desktop, so I'm going to do choose file. And let's go to desktop. And we're looking for free. So we just click on open. Okay, so once we did that, it's going to fill this in. Click decrypt password. There's my password. Don't worry, I'll be changing it after this video for all you who want to try and get into my fun stuff. Okay, but anyway, so here we go. So just in case, what I'm going to do is click copy. That way I can copy a piece of it. So I'm go over here and I'm just going to paste it here. I'm looking for a car part for my friend, so. But we're going to do download remote desktop file. 
and again desktop and we've already got it so if you didn't do it the first time this is your second chance to do it so we're gonna have two of them but I'll do it just to, so you can see now we're gonna do close okay so if we check we're running now let's close this so what we have here is remember the numbers it gave us five four two oh one three blah 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 we download it again so what we can do before we even mess with it let's go to rename and do free mt4 if I can type VPS done so double click the puppy don't ask me again and we are going to go to clipboard printers in case you want to be able to copy back and forth do connect so now it's connecting so administrator and we need that password copy paste remember my credentials click on OK okay so don't ask me again one more time and yes configuring and voila what do we have Windows Server 2008 R2 Right now, just basically loading up. While it's doing that, so what can we do at the top? There's a little pin button. If you click it once, it pins it. If not, now you want to minimize your. There we go. Here it is. Make it big again. You can window it, maximize it. And I'm going to go into how to close it so that you, if you are running MT4 or a signal provider software, you don't shut down what it's doing. Um, I use my VPS also to run my my EAs that for FX that will automatically buy and sell Forex. Okay, so we're in. Here you go. Now basically this is just a brand new computer. You can install whatever you need on it. Again, this is a light version, so don't get too crazy on it. Basically what I do is I keep it down to MT4 and my broker window or if you're looking for a signal provider software you can load it there too let's say for instance you're running a signal provider software so let's uh, open something up and see real quick go to control panel okay so the way I'm just gonna leave this window open so you can see what happens what happens is if you are running something that needs to be persistent as it's in a signal provider software the first thing that you will need to do is you never go to start and shut down or log off. All you want to do is hit the X here and it's going to say you will be disconnected. Programs on the remote computer will continue to run after you have disconnected. So if unless you want to be reminded of that, click put a check mark in and click OK. So what's that mean? Basically it means that the software is still running, we just don't have to stare at it. So let's confirm that. I told it to save password. We log back in, there's our control panel still open. Pretty simple. And again, like I said, this is a free one, it gives you a taste of setting up a VPS, using one. If you have any questions as usual, go ahead and hit me up. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and you all have a great day.